tell you guys, he's a, a caring person, and um, he's always been good to me when I was a student, uh, besides when he used to punch me in the stomach in gym class when I go out for a jump shot in basketball. He used to play defense and anything and something like that. Um, in, a, in a song, he didn't really punch me, you know what I mean? You guys supposed to laugh, that was a joke. Hey, there we go, every time. My jokes are so bad, okay, that when I tell them, no one laughs, and I actually have to tell people to laugh. It happens every single time up here. But I appreciate the laughter, it makes me feel good. It kind of, you know, quiets my nerves a little bit, the fear of getting up here and speaking. Does anyone have the fear of getting up here, uh, getting in front of people and speaking? Raise your hand. It's normal, you know, it's normal. And, and some of the best advice I got to do this was someone said, Derek, you're not that important. You're not that important. People aren't walking out of here being like, did you see Derek's presentation today? Like, oh my God, it's terrible. You know, did you see him, like, he blinked so many times and his shirt was untucked and he didn't use good vocabulary? It's a fear of what other people think, you know? I got it written down that it's the fifth time I've done this today, okay? And, and I started it for the fifth time. I was a little tired, hadn't eaten in a little bit. I said, you know what, I'm going to start writing notes down on what to say to this is a class before and, and I started to write and as usual there was no ink in my pen. Okay, so I ran out of ink real quick. I go, there goes that idea. And I just wrote, just have fun, be yourself. You know, just have fun, be myself up here. You know, and stop worrying about what other people think or how I'm going to sound. And the other thing the guy said to me was half the people aren't even listening. So you think your audience is this big, it's only this big. And, and that also worked to uh, quiet my nerves. Um, as we go through this, I would appreciate any questions you have, raise your hand as I'm speaking. I want this to be interactive. I don't want this to be me, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? You got questions as I'm, as I'm talking, uh, please raise your hand and ask anything. Uh, you guys have been talking about opiates, right? Prescription medication. Are we all on the same page? We all know what that is. Stuff doctors give you, okay? And, and I'm going to talk to you about opiates and heroin. All right, now what? If you remember anything I say today, anything I say today, I want you to understand that just because it's from a doctor does not mean it's safe, okay? Just become a doctor does not mean it's safe. If it's a Percocet, if it's an Oxycontin, if it's a Vicodin, you get your wisdom teeth taken out, you know, you get hurt, um, you have surgery, you get in a bad accident, and they give you pain medication. That pain medication has the same effect on the body that heroin does. So if you go buy heroin on the street corner or from a, a, a real drug dealer, or you get a prescription from a doctor that has an opiate in it, it has the same effect on the body, okay? I didn't know that back in the day, okay? I thought it was, it's from a doctor, it's safe, you know, it's innocent. I remember one time I was at college, okay? I know, I was visiting my girlfriend at college and I had the worst toothache in the world. And she goes, Derek, she goes, and she, she was off to her swim meet. She goes, hey, the, the, the dentist gave me these the last time I, when I got my wisdom teeth taken out. Take these if your teeth hurt. I thought they were the same thing as Tylenol. Maybe I'm just, you know, not that smart. I, I would agree with that. I'm not the smartest person in the world. Maybe some people listen in health class. I was one of the ones that didn't. I take the medication thinking it's a Tylenol. I take it and I go, whoa. I'm like, I feel pretty good. I'm laying in bed, right? My tooth still hurts a little bit. I go back. I take another one. I took all six in the bottle, okay? Six Percocets, okay? That's a ton, all right? You shouldn't, I shouldn't have done it. And I'm laying in bed going like this. I'm like scratching my face. I'm like, what is wrong with that? I look at her roommate. I go, hey, do I look high? I'm like, do I look high? Because I feel high. So I was taking a potent drug thinking that it was Tylenol, okay? And I got highly addicted to this stuff. It didn't happen that day, but I got highly addicted to this stuff. There was another time where I had a surgery as a kid, okay? Two surgeries before I was 18. And I remember saying to um, my mom, as in the post-surgery, she's handing me medication. And I remember saying, like, I feel like I'm high, mom. You know, and she's like, oh, how do you know what being high feels like? I'm like 15, and I shouldn't have been smoking, doing anything at that age. But I said it to her. And I'm taking things that are giving me uh, uh, an effect in my brain. I have no idea how powerful the stuff is. Um, what's going on and why I'm here, okay, I don't know. Have you heard about the, the heroin epidemic, the prescription medication epidemic? Yeah, everyone, you watch the news, you read the papers, there's a lot of people dying. More people have died from prescription opiate drug. And when I say opiate, I'm talking about what we talked about combined, heroin or prescription medication. More people die from overdoses of those medications or street heroin than they do in car accidents. Okay? Think about that. Think about that. You guys have driven on Massachusetts highways, right? It's terrible, awful drivers, right? Yeah? No? Some of you guys might have a license. Maybe a bad example. But it's terrible out there. 
<coughs> terrible drivers, all right? More people die from prescription medication from car accidents. In a five-year period in the war in Iraq, a war zone, more people died from prescription medication overdoses than soldiers died in Iraq. Process that for a minute. War zone, okay? It's serious, and, and it's in everywhere. It's not inner cities. It's not bad people. It's not poor people, okay? It's everywhere. It's in affluent communities like this. I grew up in Franklin, Mass. I call it a cupcake town compared to some of the other places I've been. It's a place like this. It's got good school systems. It's relatively safe. Good communities. Good teachers, okay? Positive atmosphere. There's a safety net in these places. You don't realize it now, but one day, one day you will. That places like this... The education systems in Massachusetts are great, and for the most part. And, um, sorry, I go ramble on sometimes. What was I talking about before that? I lose my train of thought sometimes. The problem, how it's everywhere. Oh, it's there. So, in, in a quick history lesson, okay, because I'm a historian on prescription medication and opiates. I've read uh, two chapters in a book, so I'm actually, you know, I have a doctorate in the history of prescribing, all right? Um, but... In the, think about this, 100 years ago, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, okay, they were, doctors were prescribing heroin to people when they had pain, okay? What they found when they did that is that people were getting addicted to it. The medical community as a whole said, we cannot do this anymore. We need to get away from prescribing opiates to people, okay, because they are highly addictive. So we had about a 70-year period where the medical community, the doctors, okay, People that were prescribing these things would not, pre would not prescribe opiates to people because they knew they were addictive, okay? And what happened was the medical community started saying, wait a minute, we got people that are dying, that are on the, like, the doorstep of death, okay? We have people who have cancer, these chronic horrific illnesses, and we're not treating them with pain, okay? So they went from one extreme to treating everything with pain medication, okay? And in the 70s, they started treating people who had these chronic issues with pain medication. But what happened was, from the 70s to now, it got overprescribed. They started prescribing it for everything, okay? And what happened was, these pharmaceutical companies, okay, what they did, and whether they did it with malice intent, with, you know, the intent, you know, to, to cause harm, or for profit, you know, I don't know, but they started marketing a pain pill called OxyContin. And what they said to the doctors was, they said, listen, this pill is the cure-all. This is what we've been looking for in the medical community, okay, for a hundred years. It will solve the pain, but it won't cause addiction because it has a time release, okay? They started giving, you know how you got like t-shirts for like companies and people try to market things, they advertise. They had Oxycontin teddy bears that they were walking into doctor's office and giving them to these doctors saying, listen guys, coffee mugs, Oxycontin coffee mugs, the, the pharmaceutical company's name was Purdue Pharma. And they convinced these doctors, who weren't pain specialists, that this drug was safe to use and it would not become, it wasn't going to be addictive because it was a time release. You didn't eat it and, and it didn't hit you all at once. It hit you over a time period, okay? That turned out to be a lie, okay? People got highly addictive because Oxycontin and heroin are the same thing, all right? So it became overprescribed, all right? And just another thing, you know, in terms of being aware and understanding.